So Honkai Star Rail has introduced some really big changes with the 2.3 update. The long-awaited Firefly is finally here, and I have done my best to build her, so I can share my thoughts about her in this video, but also, there's Jade who's coming up next in Phase 2. So I want to talk about these two 5 stars. However, the game has also finally introduced a PvP mode. Well, sort of. It's a really cute match 3 minigame, in which you can go up against other players. So I'm gonna showcase to you my strategies, how I keep winning, and then finally, I also want to talk about the new Divergent Universe and the new Apocalyptic Shadow Endgame mode, which is pretty crazy. So yeah, this video is going to be my first impressions about the 2.3 update and what I think about it. Okay, first of all, full disclosure, Hoivers decided to sponsor this video, which I'm really grateful for, and you can use my link in the description to download Hongai Star Rail to help support my channel. Now, I'm not sure about you, but Firefly really feels quite insane, with the right team of course. Now, I am still in the process of building my Gallagher and Harmony Trailblazer, however, this current team, even with not the most efficient relics, still feels absolutely bonkers, especially in the new Apocalyptic Shadow Endgame mode. Obviously, part of the reason why this team is amazing is that the first season of this mode heavily emphasizes break teams, since when enemies' weakness is broken, the whole team recovers skill points and activates their ultimates, which is amazing. But then weakness break and super break damage also gets boosted. And you can even pick up one of the three buffs, such as the one that increases break effect by 50% and boosts speed after doing a super break. So long story short, Firefly is thriving in this new game mode. Now her playstyle is pretty unique. She basically wants to go into her ultimate as soon as possible, because that's where the insane damage comes up. But even then, she can recover a ton of energy with her skill, and then in ultimate mode, she can actually imprint fire weakness on enemies and even just straight up ignore weakness type and still reduce the toughness bars. I mean, just look at her damage, it's pretty cool. But there's also Jade, who's coming up next in Phase 2. She is a 5-star Quantum Erudition unit who will specialize in dealing follow-up damage. And the mechanics look pretty interesting because when she uses her skill, she will sign a contract with one of the team members, including herself, and then whenever somebody attacks, they will deal additional damage. And for each enemy hit, Jade will gain these charge points here, while the attacking ally loses some HP in result. In addition, the ally's speed will be boosted as well. And when Jade has more than 8 charge points, she will consume them and unleash follow-up attack. Now, if she signs the contract with herself, she will not gain speed boost and won't sacrifice her own HP when attacking. And then, when she uses her ultimate, she will deal damage to all enemies and her follow-up attacks will become enhanced. So, in a nutshell, give her contract to somebody who can hit multiple enemies very easily, quickly build up her charge points, and keep speed spamming those follow-ups with her. By the way, her basic attack also deals blast damage, which is a very rare thing to see in the game for basic attacks. So she can gain up to 3 charge points by just attacking enemies with her basic. And honestly, the current meta is pretty diverse at the moment. There's super break teams that include Firefly and Boot Hill. You can also go for follow-up comps such as Dr. Ratio, Topaz, Robin and Aventurine. And there's also DOT teams with Kafka. And of course, there's the good old hyper carry comps, currently dominated by Acheron, but Imbibitor Linnae Don Hung and Jingliu also remain as very popular choices too. So, seeing how Jade is a new follow-up damage dealer, I am very interested to see how she will impact the current meta. Most likely she's gonna be a nice alternative to using follow-up teams, but, you know, she is a quantum unit, so there's always that mono quantum team that somebody will try to build. But yeah, aside from the good old meta talk, I recommend for you to check out Firefly's animated short. It's really well made, and one of the more interesting things I learned from that video is that Sam's suit she's wearing is one of the many engineered suits of Glamot's Iron Cavalry, which is a cool little detail I haven't noticed before. Overall, Firefly seems like a great character if you want to start playing the Super Break team comps. And so far, she's been demolishing content pretty easily. I will say though, that both the new Relic and Planner ornament set is a bit of a chore to farm. But from what I understand, you could just use double two-piece of the Break Effect bonuses or even add in some speed. And as for Planner sets, Talia's could also work. It's a pretty old set by now, and you might have some pieces lying around. So when you're busy farming the two new sets, at least you can equip her with, in all honesty, really decent options. Alright, so let's talk about the hardcore PvP mode of Ruthless, Ruthless Combat. Uh, yeah, so it's a match 3 game mode where you use the Origami Bird abilities and go up against 5 other players. There are some single player challenges too, but the meat of this game really is the multiplayer mode. 
Now, I personally have a love-hate relationship with Match 3 games. One day, I might be doing nothing but matching the colors, but then later on, I might rage quit because I am stuck at that one annoying stage. Luckily, this game mode is pretty chill, and I have developed a few strategies when playing in multiplayer. Okay, so first of all, besides the usual rules of Match 3 games, you can also select one of the origami birds and utilize their ability during the game. Now, I'm just gonna be straight with you here. In my opinion, Trail Birder is the best bird. The ability is super easy to trigger, you only need 5 kiwi fruits to trigger the 2x2 two two square explosion twice, so it's cheap and very effective. Obviously, I'm half kidding here, I just personally found this birdie to be the most easiest to pilot. The other ones, Silbert Wolf, March Bird, Firefly, and Robert seem fine. I just don't like the fact they cost more fruits to trigger their abilities. But anyway, in this hardcore PvP mode, I utilize a couple of strategies. First of all, there's six people total playing. It's gonna take quite a few games if you manage to stay alive, since all you gotta do is gain more score from matching and deal the difference in damage, plus some flat damage as well. And the way I do it is I make sure to save up my super bomb which are these ones right here. And I do this usually if I can see that I'm going to win or at least not take a lot of damage. Because I noticed quite often, after a few turns, my opponent might gain insane amount of points. So the super bombs I had saved up from the previous matches can be triggered as an emergency response. Also, it's quite funny to obtain obscene amount of points. Like here, I'm getting around 500 points from the insane amount of matches I've made. And yeah, the other strategy I like to use with Trail Birder, but it probably applies to other bird types as well, is that if I do use my Super Bombs, I usually match it with any other fruit besides Kiwi. Because often, after two Super Bomb matches, the Kiwis by themselves will trigger and create more Super Bombs. Although, if I'm really in a bad need for points, and I'm on my last few turns, then I do sometimes trigger Kiwis with Super Bomb. But yeah, pretty intense game mode. The Match 3 addict inside me is happy about this, and more importantly, since this event is a conventional memoir, it will be permanently added to the game as well. So if I'm gonna be bored out of my mind when playing HSR, at least I can go wipe the floor with my sweet sweet trail burger. All in all, this update is pretty dope, has some great new changes. But you know what I'm most excited about? Well, I no longer need to grind simulated universe mindlessly for planner ornaments. And it's all thanks to Divergent Universe, a new game mode. All I gotta do is finish it once per week, and then I can directly challenge any boss with the saved loadout from the run, and just farm the relics AFK. And even the Divergent Universe has some cool new twists, like the way you need to build the path buffs and utilize some strong abilities. So yeah, I'm really enjoying the 2.3 update, and if you haven't logged in for a while or deleted the game, you can use my link in the description to download Honkai Star Rail, and by doing this, you'll also help support my channel. And as always, thanks for watching, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Alright, I'm going to do some more PvP. See ya!